Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower, and we use words and phrases, especially written for people learning English. Coming up on the program, I report on the student housing crisis in Australia. Dan Friedel and Katie Weaver have a story on Black and Latino actors and filmmakers. Faith Perlo answers a pronunciation question, and we listen to the children's story Chicken Little. But first, a surprise rule by China. Requires Chinese college students overseas to learn in person if they want their education to be recognized back home. The rule has caused a housing rush for students. At the same time, housing markets worldwide are seeing rising rent prices. Zoe Zhang is a student from China who will be attending a top Australian university. She is enrolled in a master's program in marketing at the University of New South Wales. She said finding housing in Australia has been extremely difficult. It has been so hard that she has considered sleeping on the streets. About seven hundred thousand students from China, who are enrolled to study overseas, have been left in a difficult position. But the crisis is more urgent in Australia. That is because its school year starts in February. In many other parts of the world, including North America and Europe, the school year starts in September. Zhang said she panicked after the rule change. After three years of COVID-19 border closures, she and about forty thousand other Chinese students also going to Australia. Will be looking for a place to stay. I knew that finding a rental in Australia won't be easy, but I didn't expect it to be this difficult. Some are subletting their living rooms or balconies. I don't think I can do that, Zhang said from her home in the eastern Chinese province of Shandong. The University of New South Wales said campus housing is now full. It said it was in the process of fixing up university apartments to rent to foreign students. A spokesperson for Sydney University said its 2,400 dormitory beds near campus were taken. The university said it had reserved another 700 beds with other providers and negotiated lower prices with hotels. Observers say even those planning to wait another semester to start school may struggle to find a bed. Many building projects for foreign student housing were delayed during the pandemic. It takes at least four years to complete one of the buildings. Before 2020, Chinese students made up about 40 percent of the 27 billion dollars. That Australia earns each year educating foreigners. Those earnings dropped sharply because of COVID-related border restrictions. But China's reopening is a welcome sign for investors," said Brad Williams. He is managing director of AMP Capital, Australia's third largest owner of student housing properties. Louis Liu is a Chinese student in Brisbane. She has started attending property viewings across the city. She films them for Chinese students who are still in mainland China. She said she films about two viewings each day, and earns up to twenty-seven dollars for each one. Joe Du is a real estate agent in Sydney. He said he rented a one-bedroom apartment to the mother of a Chinese student for seven hundred ten dollars per week. 
that is about 40% more than the next most costly one-bedroom apartment in the neighborhood. The unit rented for $365 a week in 2022. At Sunday's Academy Awards, or Oscars, in Los Angeles, Angela Bassett will be one of the few black actors considered for a major award. Bassett is nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Award for her work in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. It is her second Oscar nomination in 40 years of acting in movies. At the recent African American Film Critics Association Awards, Bassett explained that every time she takes a part in a film, she wants the part to change how people think about black women. She said she wants to show our humanity, to tell the diversity of our stories, and to share the complexity of what it means to be black and women. The 64-year-old actor was nominated for an Oscar 29 years ago for her lead part in the 1993 film, What's Love Got to Do With It? Her comments seem to represent a common thinking among many people of color in the industry. Change in support of diversity is too slow. While some improvements followed the 2015 online protest, hashtag Oscars so white, Activists argue much more is required. In that year, white performers received all 20 nominations for the four acting awards. This year, no actors of color received awards at the major British film awards known as the BAFTAs. In the U.S., the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has been criticized for not nominating the movies Till or The Woman King for any of the major awards. Both are films with mainly black casts directed by black women. There's a constant lack of recognition for black female directors, said Gina prince Bythewood director of The Woman King. There's never been a black female director nominated in the history of the Academy Awards, she added. As a result, more black actors, directors, and producers are starting their own companies to make movies and television programs. These creators follow in the footsteps of people like Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, and Shonda Rhimes. The new creators include writers Amy Aniobi and Felicia Pride, actor Kalima Gaston, and filmmakers Fanny and Nelson Grande. Aniobi worked for a number of years on the successful HBO program Insecure, created by and starring Issa Rae, who is black, as were the majority of the show's main cast. Now Aniobi has a deal with HBO to develop new shows. She says one problem is that while the number of projects for black creators is increasing, the amount of money they get for their work is decreasing. She said, one way to make sure black creators have more work is to work with other black producers, writers, and actors. When we are invested in each other as people, we don't think it's you or me. It's for both of us or none of us, Aniobi said. Pride has written for Rhyme's television show, Grey's Anatomy, and worked with Oprah Winfrey as well. Now, the creator has her own company, Honey Child. It centers on making shows and movies that will appeal to black women over the age of 40. 
Gaston started a company called The Screening Room in 2016. The business creates cooperative spaces in Los Angeles and Atlanta, Georgia, for diverse industry members to support each other. Black Entertainment Network, or BET, recently picked up a web series presented by the company. In addition to those who want to tell Black stories, there are also producers who want to tell Latino stories. Fanny and Nelson Grande started a company called Avenida Productions to help make films and programs with Latino actors and producers. Every Latino actor I've met has dealt with the same thing, of not getting opportunities or having to play negative stereotypes, Fanny Grande said. When no production companies gave her a chance, she sought financing through crowdfunding within her community. The result? A 2021 film, Homebound, that centered on the life of a Latin American family. Hello! This week on Ask a Teacher, we will answer a question about syllable dropping in American English pronunciation. Hi, VOA Learning English. I'm Herbert from Germany. Throughout my whole life speaking English, I did not realize that some vowels in words are swallowed, like in the words vegetable, family, and difference. Could you give a lecture on this topic? Thanks a lot, Herbert. Hi, Herbert. This is an interesting question. Or is it interesting? Now you've got us thinking. We do not swallow the vowels. That would be a little strange, but it creates a great image. So why does it happen in English? First, let's talk about syllables and vowels. A syllable is a part of a word that contains one vowel sound. For example, cat is a one-syllable word that contains one vowel sound. And swallow with two vowel sounds has two syllables, swall and low. Every word in English has one stressed syllable. This is called word stress. The stressed syllable is longer, louder, and clearer than the other syllables. The stressed syllables then become shorter, softer, and less clear. Now let's look at the word family with its three vowels of A, I, and Y. The stress is on the first syllable, fam. Over time, the vowel I relaxes so much that we drop the whole syllable and turn it into family. We say some of these words so often that we skip over the less important unstressed vowels. As you said, vegetable becomes vegetable, and difference becomes difference. Let's look at a few more examples of words that lose unstressed vowels. Business is pronounced with two syllables, business, instead of three. The I vowel sound is dropped. You do not want to pronounce it as Busyness. That is another three-syllable word, busyness. Evening is pronounced with two syllables instead of three. Evening, not evening. And lastly, we have Wednesday, the third day of the work week, as Wednesday, not Wednesday. You can speak fast like a native speaker of American English by dropping syllables. 
But remember to center more on the stressed vowel rather than the dropping of the unstressed one. In this exercise, I will pronounce all the syllables first, then drop the unstressed vowel. Family, family. Difference, difference. Vegetable, vegetable. Please let us know if these explanations and examples have helped you, Herbert. What question do you have about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish at voanews.com. You just heard Faith Perlow present this week's Ask a Teacher. Welcome back to the show, Faith. Thanks, Dan. This week you answered Herbert's question about syllable dropping in American English. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Just like Herbert said, it was something that many of us, especially native English speakers, don't realize is happening until we look at the word and see that there are other syllables. It's because of that weak vowel, right? What's it called again? The schwa. It looks like an upside-down backwards E in the phonetic alphabet. And there's a joke that we want to be just like the schwa sound, completely relaxed. But sometimes that schwa is so relaxed, it falls asleep. That's when we drop it from some words. Can you give us a few more examples? There's actually two categories for these words. The first group of words have syllables that most native speakers of American English will automatically drop, like comfortable, temperature, and vegetable. We've actually learned the pronunciation like this. And let me guess, the other one depends on who is saying it. Exactly. For the second group of words, speakers may drop the syllables depending on who's speaking, the regional variety of American English, or even the context, whether it's, you know, formal or informal. Some words include camera, chocolate, and interesting. Well, this was a really interesting conversation and topic, Faith. Or should I say interesting? See you next week. Thanks for having me, Dan. And now, an American children's story from VOA Learning English. Today's story probably had its start long before it was published in Europe long ago. It might have first been known as Henny Penny, but the story has been told to American children at least since the mid-1800s under a title similar to Chicken Little. Generations have heard and thought about the lessons of the little chicken who causes big problems for a group of well-meaning but not so thoughtful birds. Today's version is based on two examples of the story. One is called Remarkable Story of Chicken Little. John Green Chandler had it published in the city of Boston, Massachusetts in 1842. Catherine Pyle published her 1918 version in Mother's Nursery Tales. The story has taken on its own American qualities and is a little like a parable, a story that teaches a moral lesson. Later retellings, including a few movie versions, have made changes to some of the characters or aimed to teach different ideas. Here is the story, Chicken Little, in VOA Learning English. One day, Chicken Little fell asleep under some flowers. Cow wandered by, reached over the fence, and bit off some flowers. The noise wakened Chicken Little just as a flower petal fell on her tail. 
Squawk, squawk, cried Chicken Little, frightened by the petals landing. The sky is falling, she continued, her call rising louder with her terror. Squawk, squawk! And she jumped up and began to run, moving as fast as her two legs could carry her. She did not stop running until she came to the barnyard. There she found Henny Penny, scratching in the dirt of the barnyard. Oh, Henny Penny, do not scratch, run, cried Chicken Little. The sky is falling. The scratching stopped. Then Hen called out, How do you know that, Chicken Little? I saw it with my eyes, I heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Let us run until we get some place. Squawk, squawk, cried Hen in return, a look of shock on her face. Then run she did, speeding away from the barnyard. Chicken Little followed close behind. They almost ran right past the little lake just as Ducky Lucky was going in for a swim. Oh, Ducky Lucky, Ducky Lucky, do not try to swim, cried Henny Penny. The sky is falling. Seriously, Henny Penny? Why do you think that? asked Ducky Lucky. Chicken Little told me. How do you know the sky is falling, Chicken Little? I saw it with my eyes, I heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Oh, let us run until we get some place. Ducky Lucky was persuaded. Yes, we had better run, he yelled, and the three took off. Ducky Lucky waddling faster than he ever had before. The birds ran and ran until they came to a green meadow, and there was Goosey Lucy eating the green grass. Oh, Goosey Lucy, Goosey Lucy, do not eat, run, cried Ducky Lucky. Why should I run? asked Goosey Lucy. Because the sky is falling. How do you know that, Ducky Lucky? Henny Penny told me. How do you know that, Henny Penny? Chicken Little told me. How do you know that, Chicken Little? Because I saw it with my eyes, and heard it with my ears and part of it fell on my tail. Oh, let us run some place. Yes, we had better run, cried Goosey Lucy. Away they all ran, Goosey Lucy in the lead, and they ran and ran until they came to the turkey yard. And there was Turkey Lurkey strutting and gobbling. Oh, Turkey Lurkey, do not strut, cried Goosey Lucy. Why should I not strut? asked Turkey Lurkey. Because the sky is falling. How do you know it is? Ducky Lucky told me. How do you know, Ducky Lucky? Henny Penny told me. How do you know, Henny Penny? Chicken Little told me. Chicken Little, how do you know this for a fact? I could not help knowing. I saw it with my eyes. I heard it with my ears. And a part of it fell on my tail. Oh, let us run until we get some place. Yes, it would be best to run, said Turkey Lurkey. So away they all ran, first Turkey Lurkey, 
and then Goosey Lucy, and then Ducky Lucky, and then Henny Penny, and then Chicken Little. They ran and ran until they came to Foxy Loxy's house. Foxy Loxy was resting, spread out across the doorway. She kept yawning, opening her mouth wide so that all her sharp teeth showed. But her mouth snapped shut at the sudden arrival of the frightened birds. Turkey Lurkey and Goosey Lucy and Ducky Lucky and Henny Penny and Chicken Little. Her eyes softened and her ears stood up. She was so very happy to see them all and smiled sweetly. Well, well, the fox said, what brings you all here? Foxy Loxy, prevent yourself from yawning, cried the old turkey lurkey. Indeed, the sky is falling. How do you know that, turkey lurkey? asked the fox. Goosey Lucy informed me. How do you know that, Goosey Lucy? Ducky Lucky told me. How do you know that, Ducky Lucky? Henny Penny told me. How do you know that, Henny Penny? Chicken Little. How do you know that, Chicken Little? I could not help knowing, for I saw it with my eyes, and I heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Oh, where shall we run? We ought to go some place. Well, said the fox, you come right into my house, and I will protect you and take such good care of you that even if the sky falls, you will not know anything about it. So in ran Turkey Lurkey, and Goosey Lucy, and Ducky Lucky, and Henny Penny, and Chicken Little. Foxy Loxy waited for a while, and then shut the door firmly behind her. She would not let the falling sky threaten her guests, you see. She was going to take special care of them all. And maybe she did. But no one ever saw Chicken Little or her friends again. Thank you.